The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, December 7th, 2022, Season 18, Episode number 85. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, today we're going to talk the Houston Texans offense versus the Dallas defense. Uh, I don't know how much time that's going to take. My suspicion is it may be we may be able to run through it pretty quickly, but we'll also get some calls from you guys, maybe some uh, email or some I'm sorry, some tweets from you guys. <laughs> I went all the way back to you 1987. We got some um, carrier pigeon from you guys. <laughs> so you guys feel Morse free to code. call us at 888-855-2297 again, 888-855-2297. Let's start uh, with I think what's dominated the Cowboys, uh, I guess Cowboys world for the last uh, few days here. Uh, what are we hearing about Odell Beckham? Is there anything new at this point? Where is he, and and what are we expecting to happen? What are we hearing? I don't know where he is, but he did He's leave Arizona, Miami, one leave. of those places. He did leave. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think as it stands right now, everything that we've been told for what both sides want, this doesn't look to work out right now because. They want Odell to play this year. Doesn't look like his knee is ready to do that. You're going to have to make a deep, deep run in the playoffs, something that hasn't been done in 30 years. So it's hard to, to just foresee that that happening. So unless Odell's price comes down to to something that's that makes sense for next year and that's something that the Cowboys want to pursue, this just doesn't seem like it. the timing fits. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think what we've learned is the Cowboys were going to be super aggressive in trying to get this done, and they were they were kind of ramping this thing up in a, in a way of okay, let's let's think about this. Okay, let's do it. You know, everybody was kind of rallying. They were recruiting, and then they got to the point where they got to see the knee, and then when that happened, then all of a sudden the realization set in. It's like, okay, we did all we could to make the guy feel loved, which you absolutely have to do with this guy. You absolutely have to recruit him. And, you know, so they got to a point where they got the knee looked at. Did they get their workout? No. But did they get to pull and push and have an idea and ask him a bunch of questions and ask him how the rehab's been and all that? You know, he sat there and answered a bunch of questions about it. And But it comes to the realization that, you know, you're probably not going to be ready until the playoffs. You could talk about wanting to be in the playoffs and all that, but there's also the realization that this thing might not be well enough until next year, until it really – and and I think that's where the Cowboys are right now. And I know Nick is – you guys have done a great job on DallasCowboys.com, you know, talking about where the deal, you know, is it more about uh, can they get something done this year? They want to do – Cowboys want to do something now. And, the, you know, he's kind of like, well, I want some security for longer term. And I don't think the Cowboys are ready for that. And I, and I, and I, I like what Nick's saying about the timing. I heard him on 105.3 this morning talking about that. And I think the timing is the, the right word for this. It's just, not a, it's just not good right now for where he is physically and what the Cowboys are willing to do. I think that had this been happening a few weeks ago, it would have been very, very frustrating and upsetting to hear this when you're like, we absolutely need a wide receiver to come in here and help this team and elevate it to another level. Now I feel that I'm okay. I'm like, okay, it sucks that it doesn't seem that it's going to be working out at least for this year. But it feels like the wide receivers that we got, the step that they've taken forward it seems to be now where maybe it's enough for this team. And also, I saw somebody tweeting a Cowboys break mentioning, why is nobody talking about James Washington? And he's another one that his window has been activated, and we're not really... And I think the reason is because I don't think most of us expect him to be a huge difference maker yeah. once he comes in. We might be wrong. Or I might yeah. be wrong. He might show some things, but I think as a, as it stands right now, and I don't know about you guys, I feel that 
we're okay and we can make it happen with the with the guys that we have. Yeah, James Washington needs to be better than Noah Brown. And right that, now, I'm not sure that he is. Well, that's yeah, that's yeah. what you have to get him out on the field and and work with him. Yeah, and I, you know, you've you got a couple of roster moves. You're playing light right now. You're down one player. Uh, you know, you've been playing with 52 players. You've got, uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna put Brown on injured reserve, or he's gonna be done for the season. So that'll give you another spot. Now, now the next options for a front office is activate Washington and then Tyron, get Tyron yeah. Smith on. Those are your next two moves that you're going to make. And uh, you know, I've kind of felt like that the the Beckham Washington was kind of tied together, and it, maybe it, it really wasn't. But I just didn't feel like they wanted to make two moves at wide receiver. I didn't feel like they wanted to add. Beckham and Washington, and then have to kind of figure. I think they really want to see Tolbert continue to play, or at least be active and get those opportunities. You know, more so. That's the future of your team, not probably Washington or Beckham or any of those guys. That's that's your future going forward, right there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he has to be better than Noah Brown. I think he has to be better than Tolbert. I think Noah Brown moves into a role with jo- with Joseph now, not playing as much or on special teams. Um, I think that that. You know, Tolbert runs around out there. I think Washington can be better than that. From the sounds of things, talking to some people, uh, he's done a pretty nice job in practice so far, James Washington. So, yeah, we're all looking to see him. Everyone's been talking about it for a while. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I think he'll, and I think he is, he's obviously better than Odell Beckham right now because Odell Beckham can't play. Yeah. Now, you know, when they're both at their best, of course, that, that that's what makes this thing so exciting about Odell. And let's go back to, I don't know who it was, tweeted this thing out about a month ago, three weeks ago, when they said, you know, Odell has been cleared. Okay, by who? Like, that's what changed everything. Because when yeah. people got it in their mind that Odell was healthy and ready to play, that's when it was like this thing got some legs when it never should have. Well, that was that, that goes back to Jay Glazer. That goes back to like in the the beginning of November, mm-hmm. and like and he went on Fox pregame show, and in his you know game notes he was talking about Odell Beckham. I mean, it, and it got a lot of push, mm-hmm. you know. And then that's when everybody started to get excited. Like okay, like Amber was talking about, the Cowboys were kind of in that little bit of a lull at wide receiver, and like man, you need a wide receiver. Well, here we go, that kind of thing. So yeah, I, it was Glazer. And then all of a sudden, the other guys like the Ian Rappaports and others were like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I, I don't think that. Then we started to hear the 1st of December. you know, And then it turned into, okay, well, now he's going to take visits. Well, we're almost to the middle of December now. you know, And you're kind of like thinking he's still trying to make a decision. Mm-hmm. So this thing has gone like six weeks since Jay Glazer first yeah. went on Fox and told the world – that Odell Beckham had been cleared for medical stuff. And to Nick's point, yeah. you know, the, the, every trainer and doctor that I talked to around the league was like, by who? Who, who was yeah. he cleared by? And yeah. I feel like we would have had seen on social media Odell putting out videos of, you know, working out, cutting, doing some yeah. routes yeah. or doing some running of some sort, which I feel that almost every football player that's working on their rehab and coming back and trying to show what – you know how they're improving and progressing they start putting out videos like that and that's one that we haven't seen at all and because it's I, I not think, ready yeah i think i think you just ran out of time on this one yeah i really do let me ask this question and amber you brought this up i think it's an interesting point you say right now you think as opposed to a few months ago or a few weeks ago you think the wide receivers are good enough does the loss of anthony brown change that a bit and what i mean by that is Are you going to find yourself in a situation where this defense, you've been able to count on this defense throughout this year. You get a a little, you know, a a guy over here, a cornerback that maybe gives up a little bit more. Are you now in a situation where you need a little more scoring? You need a little bit more from your offense? And let's be honest, and this has been one of your big things, Amber. They don't start games well. (laughs) They have not started games well. That's true. Right. So, So with all those things being considered, do you think that maybe that factors in the loss of Anthony Brown? Does that factor in on, hey, we might need more firepower on this offense in order to make this team really be able to go, especially when we start playing better teams in the playoffs? I think that I think what the Cowboys offense is currently doing would be enough because what they're doing with the running game plus how the receivers are playing, I think it's enough for them to keep up with scoring points. The biggest thing is that. How long does it take for them to move the chains and get the rhythm going for a game. That's the biggest aspect of it. But 
it does become concerning, and we we've, we've seen it because even with Anthony Brown in the game, I mean, he, he I I like to defend him from time to time, but it it had become it had gotten to a point where you can't really defend it anymore, and. He had been having a bad season, and teams were attacking him. And like Nick and Brian said yesterday, Trevon Diggs is just like, you know, give me something because nothing's coming my way. So it does bring up some concerns for sure, but I do think that the offense can be enough to keep up and compete. Has Anthony Brown really hurt you? Like, I know it seems like to me you can count on basically one play a game that he's going to give up. Yeah. There are other times they're going downfield and it doesn't necessarily connect. So is he really is he really hurting you? And is is Kelvin Joseph gonna now give up two or three of those plays? Or is it a situation where if he only gives up one, then you're still fine, can you're I, getting exactly what you were getting. Can I circle back to your your question though about sure. firepower? The general manager told us this in Tampa week that you will get Tyron Smith back during the meat of the yep. the run. That's your answer for firepower. That it's not it's offense, it's not receivers or skill, it's a Hall of Fame left tackle. Gotcha. That's 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 to me, if you want to say, I can't add Odell Beckham now to help me, but what can I add? I could add Tyron Smith to the lineup, you know, a Hall of and we'll see if he plays at that level that we've all accustomed to. So that's the move offensively that I'm looking for now. I, you know, I, I don't think I, ha- I don't have a shot at Odell Beckham for this year. So now I'm looking at can Tyron Smith be that guy and can moving some guys around make my running game even better, make my pass protection even better, give my quarterback better opportunity to find the better wide receivers and the young tight ends and you know the whack a mole brothers. You know that's you know that's that's you know. <laughs> They, they, you know, work with those guys. That's kind of how I kind of feel like this is going to where you're going to get. Now, the thing about with Anthony Brown and stuff like that, yeah, that that the the, the thing that's disappointing is that I, you know, we, we've saw, we've seen him play at a much higher level, and the thing that the the concern of, of me now is, I'm going to take a chance with with Joseph because this coaching staff has proven, and the scouts have proven to me. That when they add players, or you know, there's a reason they drafted Kelvin Joseph in the second round. Now it might be a miss. They they have a they have a history of second round misses. They've also have a history of some second round hits. Yeah, absolutely. Too. So I'm going to trust that Dan Quinn realizes the strengths of that kid playing out there, and maybe he's not going to put him out there by himself. You know, maybe he's going to like, okay, I got to protect him a little bit. Maybe I play a little bit more zone where he can drive on balls. Or maybe I play to his strengths where I know he's going to be physical, but I worry about him holding at the mm-hmm. line of scrimmage. I worry about him being very handsy. I worry about him maybe playing some at depth and all of a sudden just grabbing the guy because he didn't read the route the right way. I, I, I trust Dan Quinn is going to do what he has to do to protect that kid. Will it be enough? The next few games will tell you that. And, you know, you do have options, though, with – Bland and and some others there, you know. We'll see with, if they can. Somebody off the practice squad can help, but that's that's. I mean, Deion Sanders ain't walking through that door, you know, as they used to say. I mean, he ain't walking that's through. You got to kind of make. Yeah. Probably would send us all to the transfer portal. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> I like his honesty though. I do too. Yeah. I actually love it. I, I love it. Yeah. You're not one. You're not one in ten for a reason. You know. Yeah. I've seen. It's he usually, was like, usually you those guys, guys aren't going to be here. Yeah. Right. You, you guys are not going to get me fired. Honestly, there are more college programs probably ought to do that. I'm yeah. Looking uh, at my team. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go in there and tell them you're not entitled to anything. Yeah. But well, anyway. Go ahead. But, Sorry. But no. That's the. That's my thought. I. I'm going to trust that Dan Quinn and Joe Witt and 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 Al Harris are going to have this kid ready to play. Will it be good enough? Again, time will tell. All right, let's uh, let's take our first break. Go ahead. I was just gonna say real quick. That's like I want to believe, but even like the greatest, like you know, look at people you like: Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Bat Bunny. You know, (laughs) they put out most of the songs you like and love, but then there's that one song that you're like, "What the heck? Like this? I'm not feeling this one." So I Pitbull that way for you too. Uh, I'm not a f- really fan of Pitbull. She let him go after Bad Bunny came over. Oh, okay. She, she's no, now, I like she's Pit- now all no, in on Bad I Bunny. I love Pitbull as a person yeah. and his charisma. I don't like his music, gotcha. really. Okay. All right. uh, anyways, my point is, there's always a, <laughs> there can be a miss. Yeah. And I'm not saying, 
I want to believe and let's see what happens in the next few weeks. But I think, I mean, Kelvin might be a miss for the Cowboys. Sure. We don't know. We'll see how he handles this stretch and, and what happens next year. But that could be a possibility, too, even though I highly, highly trust Dan Quinn and his talent and what he can do and develop. That, the only reason I do that is they've – They've bought my trust. Yep. They've earned it. Yeah, they, yeah, they have, they they've have. absolutely earned my trust. So we'll so I, I was now. Last year, I was praying this defense would be middle of the road, and they led the league in turnovers, and then they figured out, oh, by the way, this Morse, Michael uh, Micah Parsons guy, who if you watch Penn State tape, they never played him as a rush end. Dan Quinn said, what if we put this kid it in? What do you think? Well, next thing you know, he's double-digit sack guy every year. Well, you and know? He also said in the offseason – Apparently he told some people that the guy he's the most excited about was Donovan Wilson. He said mm-hmm. there were some things with Donovan Wilson that we can do to be really creative on defense. And mm-hmm. Donovan Wilson is tied with the you know with Leighton Vander Esch in tackles right now on the team. Leighton Vander Esch, a guy that that thought he was going to Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and the Steelers signed someone else, and he came back to Dallas. But you know, ironically, about second round picks that the Cowboys have three of them right now that they're about to add to this not add to the team, but add to either the mix. I would say Kelvin Joseph, second round pick. So let's see what they you know what they've got. James Washington was a second round pick of the Steelers. Mackenzie Alexander, who's expected to be on the practice squad, second round pick of the Vikings, I believe. Same draft as Jalen Smith, you know, Dak, that draft. But at some point somebody thought you could play, you could yeah. play at a high level. And so, you know, we'll see these these guys right there are now kind of in, in the mix here. All right, we're going to take our first break. We're going to come back. We'll talk about the Houston offense versus Dallas defense. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite and 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Give the gift of the Cowboys this holiday season with the Dallas Cowboys United membership. Gift your super fan an annual fan club membership and a fan pack for as little as $20. Tis the season. Learn more at DallasCowboys.com slash United. Welcome back. Second segment of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. The segment's presented by Blockchain.com. All right, let's, uh, let's get into the Houston offense versus the Dallas defense. I want to preface this by saying, before we start talking about this Houston team, um, just know we that know this week you're from there. No, no, no. Well, oh. th- that's actually where I was going a little <laughs> oh, okay. bit. But he was but wishing the Oilers thing, would come back. I really do. I really do <laughs> wish the Oilers were still around. But one thing to note here is this is going to be one of those weeks where, for Dallas fans, this game doesn't even rate. Like it's not really a game you're probably that excited about. Will care much about talking about resting guys. I will. I will put money on it <laughs> that in the city of Houston, at least in the Texans building. Yeah. 
they are looking at this as if we don't win any other game this year, and by the way, they've only won one other yeah. game this year, this is the game that they want to win really, really, really bad. Well, you see it in co- I know. You see it in college. You see it sometimes in the pros. But there are times sometimes where your matchup is, for one team, more about we have to beat this team. And sometimes matching that energy can be a problem. So I'm going to preface all the conversation we have this week when we talk about this team. They're not very good, and they are not very good. Like, you look at all the statistics, you watch them play. They are not a very good team. Just know, don't be surprised if you get to halftime of that game and you're like, man, what's happening in this yeah. game? Like, oh, I expected no. them to do – I yeah. expected Dallas to just blow them out. That could be one of these kinds of weeks. That being said, now let's jump in and let's talk about Houston versus Dallas, starting with the Houston offense versus Dallas defense. Brian, tell me – do they have a strength? What is their strength? Yeah, it's actually uh, Damian Pierce, the running back. That's the guy that, I mean, to me, I, I he is, that's a fourth round pick, man. And you're looking at him, and I'm watching him play, and their, their offensive line is not good. Mm-hmm. But this kid makes people miss. He gets extra yards after contact. I mean, he, he just bounces up after every play. There'll be plays where they have negative runs. And he like he just bounces up, and then the next play they hand it to him, and he goes twelve yards. I mean, he's just that kind of player. And you know, they they hit on one there. They really, really did because he is their best offensive weapon. You, you can talk about with Brandon Cooks and stuff. He's been banged up. Nico Collins. I mean, Philip Dorsett. It, it's just kind of a group of receivers. But we've seen kind of group of receivers have some success before, you know, if you look at what the Packers were able to do, but a totally different quarterback oh, there. Yeah. They're back to Davis Mills at quarterback. They've been running with Kyle Allen the last two weeks. He's not been very good. Uh, you know, we all kind of know Kyle Allen from when he was with the Commanders. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Davis Mills is the guy that that is going to run back the offense a little bit, and he's capable of throwing the football. I mean, he's capable, but he takes sacks. He, you know, he, he doesn't make quick decisions in the pocket, and the problem is their offensive line. They have Laramie Tunsil at left tackle. Or, excuse me, at left tackle. He's a good player. He's just not to the level that he once was. I, I just watch him play. I mean, you see people get around him. Uh, you know, Titus Howard on the other side is the same way. I mean, they, those guys were, you know, very high draft picks, and they're both just struggling. Kenyon Green from my alma mater, LSU, was a first-round pick at guard. He's struggling pretty bad, too. They really look very light up front the way they play. They give up a lot of a lot of ground when you rush them. They, they absorb blocks and then absorb their man, and then they really don't have any kind of strength to make it work. But this runner... They try and create plays with him. It's almost like a college offense, you know, with a lot of movement, the inside handoffs, motion coming the other way, try and kind of trick you into running the football. But if this guy does get space, I'm talking about Pierce, he can make you pay for it. That that's their that's their best shot. I mean, it, here's another back that Dallas is gonna have to uh to be aware of. And, you know, the last several weeks they've played some quality backs and they've done a really good job. This guy will be another test, but this offensive line will struggle to block the Cowboys off and, uh Cowboys defensive line. What what I love about about hearing that and, and going to what you said, you're right. I mean it happens all the time. You you just you just don't match that level of intensity. It's a twelve o'clock game. You know it, it, there are some some writings on the wall that it could be that way. The good thing about it is is that these defensive linemen, including Micah Parsons, are led by Micah Parsons. They want to get as many sacks as they can get, and 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 they will they will hunt in a situation like that with offensive line isn't isn't as good and right. all that. So. I think they will always be ready to play in, in a situation about attacking, fears, getting after the quarterback. The offense, you know, that's usually you could have a slow start here and there, and you got. But I do think that this team feeds off the defense, led by Micah Parsons, led by his mentality, and I think it's really hard to for them to not have that focus. Let me pause you right quick because I I know that I, I get that. One of the things that you've talked about particularly is. Uh, and this was going back to the weeks when they were really struggling with the run. You were like, I think part of the problem why they're struggling with the run is because they're so aggressive and yeah. they're going out game yeah. saying, I want to go get the quarterback. I want sacks. I want sacks. Do you think that could that actually could be a, a problem if they go into this week thinking, 
Davis Mills, like that. Yeah. That's that's blood in the water. Yeah, and they're going to to go get the quarterback, You're and right. now Pierce is out of the backfield and, and running for and thirty that's, yards. That's the catch twenty two of the whole thing. Is that you? You could that, that could happen. Um, I, I think that they've done a nice job, though, of run, of kind of flipping the script, though, mm-hmm. and being more a run first time. You know, you know, you look at the the teams that they were facing here. The last three runners, I mean, yeah. Barkley and Taylor and Cook, I guess, were the last three. Yeah, and, and they've done a really really good, good job. running backs, yeah. by the way. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think they'll have the same focus here, and it will get to third and long. And when it does, then that's what well, they'll. if they're if they're studying the tape. They're going to look at this team, this offense, and they're going to see that he's their best player. Right. That's the guy they got. That's get. that's the guy that they have to stop, and and they're they're going to figure it out. And you know we we can we can talk about this like we always do. You can you, you can sit there and take you can take digs and put them with whoever you feel like their best weapon is on the at receiver, and then put ten men in the box and say, okay, try and run the ball now. You know that kind of thing with an right. offensive line. I mean, they've done a good job the last three weeks of playing the run. You know, let you you get these major backs that are only averaging three and a half yards a carry. Yeah, that's that's winning football right nice there. Ball. And so it'll be a challenge with this kid. But like I said, their offensive line, the last thing that they want to do is expose. And we say this every week about the teams that are playing the Cowboys, especially up front, is you do not want to expose your your quarterback to pass rush. So I, I could see them saying, okay, we're going to try and toss the ball. We're going to try and run misdirection. We're going to try and run counters. We're going to try and run mm-hmm. uh, shovel pass. We're going to try to do anything we can, screens, just to kind of keep this defense. Because they know their offensive line can't block this front. And the kid will run hard. I mean, he like I said, there might be three or four negative plays in a row, and then he busts one for like 28 yards. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it happens every game with this guy. I think that us. Long as your offense, Cowboys offense, is scoring points that they need to, the defense is gonna start off focusing on what they need to take care of, which is the run, and then they can feast on attacking the quarterback. And it gets to the that point, similar to what we saw last week, mm-hmm. where it gets to the point where now they're just having fun. And as soon as your your, your guys are having fun, it's game over. That's an absolute win for your team. So I think it. it, it will get to that point a lot sooner than like third quarter or fourth quarter. It'll be in the first half. They'll take care of the run, stop it when they need to. But you get, let's say, even two possessions in ahead. That's it. And they'll they're gonna wanna, you know, rank up those sacks. And like Nick said, Micah Parsons will probably want to add. What was it? Three probably for oh, this game. Probably. Well, he only he's gonna make up for the last game. He didn't yeah. have any, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure so he's, he's gonna, gonna he's gonna be ready. He averages yeah. one a game, even though he's never had one. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. gets two or zero. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, all or nothing. He's, he's back to. He'll probably try to get two here. Let's. This thing I thought was real interesting. I was looking at weeks four through ten. Damian Pierce, their running back in Houston, uh, he rushed for ninety plus yards in five of those six games. Yeah. That was like the, the part of the season where everybody's like. Man, who's this kid in Houston? He is running the ball really All the guys, effectively. The fantasy football guys were trying to figure exactly out, right? people trying to pick him up and, and got him on their teams. And then the last three weeks happened uh, against Washington. He had eight yards. Oh yeah, at yeah. Minnesota he had eight yards, and then against Cleveland last week he had seventy three. Brian, what changed? What changed in how they're using him or in how teams are defending him that oh. took him from what he was doing those five or six oh. weeks to those last two They don't two have weeks. to ask Brian. I can tell you what changed. Washington's what changed. Washington's not going to let you run the ball. <laughs> I mean, what about Minnesota? Oh. Like, Minnesota's not some great rush defense, right? No. What was the score of that game? I don't remember that Titan. Was it Texans? You, sure, the, you say Minnesota. I didn't watch Minnesota. I watched Miami is who okay. I watched. Oh, Miami. Miami. Was it Miami or Minnesota you're talking about? Did you I say? MIA. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I might have. I might have. Yeah, been, they. Yeah. I watched. Yeah, Miami. They. Miami, yeah. They were down thirty to nothing at half. Yeah. Okay. They, so they that's tried what to got them out of there. Yeah. They, well, all of a sudden they're throwing the ball or they're trying to throw the ball with Allen and he. They have a. They had a fumble. They had a, the tight end had a fumble and then they had interceptions. Yeah, they had three interceptions. I mean, it was it was twenty seven to nothing and then the Dolphins got a two minute field goal. They make it thirty to nothing at half. So at that point, is uh, it sounds like Pierce is not a guy that can catch out of the back four. They don't use him like that. They try to throw him screens and stuff like that, but they don't use him. They don't use him like that. I mean, okay. to me, like I say, the the thing the thing that was the, like I say, I, I watched the I watched the Commanders game and the Commanders they they no. Dolphins, no. Cleveland, you know, Cleveland can play run defense too. And so it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a it was a problem for him. But I think a lot of it is because they're playing against defensive fronts that just overwhelm their offensive line. 
That's the issue there. I don't. It's not the kid. Yeah. It's the fact that they can't block the commanders. Not many people can block the commanders right. when right. it comes to running the ball. The Dolphins are pretty physical up front, you know. But that game just got completely out of hand, you know. So now they're in a throw mode that whole game. And then with Cleveland, though, I felt like though that. You know, Cleveland's front's okay, but it wasn't not like the other two that they were having to deal with. But it it's not the kid. It's their offensive line can't yeah. block. That's and is that problem. similar to what they're gonna face? They're gonna this have week? a pro- yeah, they're it's gonna just, have yeah, yeah. if you overpower them then they're gonna have a problem this week too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be I, I I don't remember a game going into it that, that you're like this is this is absolutely going to be a huge blowout. And I, I just don't see any way around it. And the main reason, no, I don't. I, I know don't. that's what worries me, no, though. I hate no, that. I hate when no, it gets to that point. Here, here's here's why, though. Yeah. I, I think the Cowboys are way better than them on defense against Houston's offense. Tomorrow, you're going to find out, I think the Cowboys' offense is way better than Houston's defense. Yeah. And I think their special teams is is playing at a really high level as well. I don't know what Houston's is, but it's a, I mean, they don't have a lot of weaknesses in their if game. If you punt, they can they have a punt returner. Okay. They have a legitimate. I mean, if you, if yeah. they make you punt, I mean, if they make you punt. They have a guy. Ultimate. He's got a ton of practice probably. <laughs> yeah. Um no, I Actually, the kick returner was probably got yeah. a lot of practice, yeah. but no, I, I just think the Cowboys are are playing. At, at, I mean, they're playing really well right now. They're focused. I think the coaching staff's done a great job. They're getting more players back, um, and, and I just think that they're going to be better than Houston in every single way. I don't think this is going to be close at all. I'll be anxious on Friday if you give them a point when you when you do your. No, story. and honestly, everything you see and you when you compare these two teams says. This is not going to be a matchup where Dallas should struggle at all. Mm-hmm. And especially when you start looking at what Dallas has done over the last three weeks. Yeah. Uh, you look at right now, around the NFL, I think there is a love fest going on with the Cowboys because people are looking oh, sure. at them like that defense and now they're scoring 40 plus. Like that that's well, a problem. And so you match them up against a team that only has one win through 12 games. Of course, they're supposed to destroy them. What I know about the NFL is the moment that everybody no agrees on one thing, no question, the opposite's going to happen. This is the biggest point spread I've ever seen, though. What's the point spread? It was seventeen. It's now Ooh. sixteen. See, in the NFL, that's crazy. Seventeen. Yeah, I've that's never crazy. Seen that. and, See, and it's down to sixteen because you know. Like, oh, I'll, I'll take, take that. I'll right. Take my chances I'll take that. On that. Right. Yeah. The thing about the thing about the, the if there's a game that the Cowboys that you should really probably worry about. Will be the Jacksonville game next yeah. week. If that's the quarterback's the, back. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's but that's the thing about it. You should worry about it just because of Doug Peterson's familiarity with you mm-hmm. know with your team. But also when you look at the week before the Philadelphia game, you know that mm-hmm. that could be one of those games you're kind of like, okay, you smash the Texans, and now you get ready for Jacksonville, and you're like thinking. Man, but next week we got a big showdown against, and then on a short week, yeah. And all these shows are talking about Cowboys, Eagles, Cowboys, Eagles, and I think the Cowboys are getting all this notoriety is because they smashed the Colts, you know, on on uh, last week on you know that whole thing, and then but the Eagles didn't. Eagles had to scrape by to beat the Colts, you know. So now it's like, well. You know, look what's going on here. The Eagles are just kind of scraping by, and Cowboys are smashing. But I think the I think the Eagles had a signature win last week, beating I Tennessee. Yeah, because they smashed them. Yeah. yeah. So all of a sudden, you're thinking, well, there's a possibility that the Titans are going to go in there and run the ball and be no. Well, no. Feelings matter, and and Soriani, Eagles, Colts. That was a big deal yeah. for him. It was a big deal for the Colts. They played that way. Was that was close. the Green Bay McCarthy game. Green Bay game. McCarthy, yeah. same yeah. thing. Things yeah. things like that kind of factor in. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Probably didn't care about winning some of the other games. He wasn't going to lose to the Cowboys. Yeah. And, and, and so that, not to McCarthy, not to McCarthy, yeah. right? And so that well, really the Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, it hasn't. He hasn't yeah. no, really. We know. He's it's always been that star. He's been pretty yeah. good. At whoever the coach is, but no, I just I just feel like sometimes we don't factor that in, and that's where analytics will never yeah. uh, uh, come into the play. feelings. Yeah, it's just sometimes things are just a little different. It's so. what I'm talking about this week. Yeah, and again, right. the team no, just Houston, isn't good enough. Houston just isn't good yeah, enough. You're right, but the feelings are there. Don't the don't doubt that the feelings make are this there. Thing yeah. a, a yeah. closer game. Uh, no, no, I I, I can see it, but. This it's, is this is what I always think about. I always think of this one line in my one of my favorite movies is Rounders. It's a poker movie. I don't know if you've seen it, but he talks about you just chop the leg off, you chop one of the leg off the table, and then after that you just lean on them. You just lean on them and they'll go down. That's <laughs> what they did against the Colts. Yeah. You know, they it took a while to chop that leg yeah. off, but I mean you just keep leaning. And after sixty minutes, if I'll play what, the way I play, you play your way for sixty minutes, and when it's all said and done. 
you're going to be on the ground. You're going to fall. And that's pretty much the way I think it'll be. Houston might do everything they can do, but for 60 minutes of football, yep. they just And can't. I think that's the key. I think Houston's going to throw everything at this game. Yeah. That may keep them around till halftime. Flea flicker? At some point, maybe oh, so. But at some flicker. point, but at some point Dallas is just the better team. Yeah. I mean, think about it like this. And this is what happens in Houston so much. There are so many Cowboys fans in Houston that now you've got brothers and cousins who are actually having this whole week, they're like, man, I'm tired of hearing about the Cowboys. I'm tired of hearing about the Cowboys. They're going to play the Cowboys. So that's where rivalries happen is when it's the people you're dealing with. It's why college football in Texas, if you go to Texas, if you go to Texas A&M, if you go to Oklahoma, like it matters because you're around those people all the time. you got to listen to them. That's why in Houston this week, even though they know they're not the better team, they just want to kick the they crap love out it. of the Cowboys. Yeah. And so it's gonna it matters. It matters in the city of Houston right now, hey, I think, for those Texans fans. I never forget, Nick, I you probably went back and pulled back all your articles when the Cowboys and the Texans played in that inaugural we game. We were there. That was I, I have yeah. never ever been more miserable. I, I mean, I've been in a lot of football games. That is the most miserable I have ever been after a football game. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously. I'm oh. like, we're all going to get fired. What was that final? Nine, 19 10? to 10. Yeah. yeah. But it was, God, it was. And, and it was. And, and the next year, what happened? Their, their media guide had on the cover oh, yeah. was yeah. like, you know, yeah. like, David and that was a Carr, four, that like, was a four yeah. and twelve team. The Texans were a four and yeah. twelve team that yeah. year. Cowboys are five and twelve, so it wasn't like yeah. the Cowboys were much better. But yeah. you know, yeah, that five was, eleven, yeah. five yeah. and five eleven, yeah. yeah. But I remember, <laughs> I remember that was so that was like the fourth year I was covering the team, and it was the first year I felt like we could really kind of get away with some some headlines, you know. And I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget that headline because after that game, we put humiliated with spelled at H O U. Like yeah, million. I remember that. I remember. And that. I just remember like like is this okay? And, and I think you were like, they were. <laughs> like, this is humiliating. It, it, it really was. It, it's a serious. brand new franchise. It was the first game in the history of their franchise. You know, they got all the guys out there that are like these picks that they got through the oh, expansion sure. draft. Yeah. Like, and you you should go down there and you should win that game. And it was they crazy. Did uh, it, it, it was. I, I remember sitting in that afterwards, just I mean, we're driving home, and I'm like. Why am I even here? But, why? But why? I mean, I, I can't. Year, I can't. I can't even beat an expansion see, team. You see, know? That year, and you'll hear me say this every time. I always tell you, what's the most important game on the schedule? I always say it's week two. Week two, because whatever you just did in week one, everyone, the one in one game, it, yeah. it, it, you either you build on it or you you bounce back from embarrassment or whatever it is, you come back and you always see a huge difference. And that was one of those years. The Cowboys came back in week two. They played Tennessee, which yeah. was a good team. They'd been in the yeah. Super Bowl a couple of years before that. Steve McNair and all that. They came back, and they won that game. They yeah. won Quincy and Dexter Coakley. They played really well. They won that game. Totally different feel from what you had sure. just seen in week one. Feelings matter, you yeah. know, like yeah, we just exactly talked about, right. and it mattered in that game. Yeah, I think so. Let's take our final break. We'll come back. I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about Damone Clark uh, and Anthony Barr, what they did this last week, and what we're seeing there at the linebacker position. We'll do that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. The season is finally here. For months, we've been gearing up to win. Now it's time for the team that performs on any field, United Ag and Turf. With John Deere zero turns for mowing, compact tractors for loading, mini excavators for digging, Gator utility vehicles for hauling, implements for grading, hay tools for baling, United Ag and Turf for winning. The official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com for more. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. This sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper is on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. When you build, you start with the foundation. 
and home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America NA, equal housing lender, credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Head to at t Stadium on Saturday, December 10th to experience Rally Day presented by SeatGeek. Get ready to cheer on your Cowboys with tours of at t Stadium, games, inflatables, and more. Plus, hey. visit SeatGeek Skies to your seat activation zone to enter your chance for a game day experience with lifetime cleaning tickets, helicopter ride, at t Stadium, meet and greet with DeMarcus Ware. Visit at t Stadium.com slash Rally Days for tickets and more information. Is that Jerry's helicopter? For the helicopter ride? I don't know. Huh. Be interesting. Be kind of fun. Yeah, it would yeah. be kind of fun. OBJ got a ride. Home. Yeah. I was about to say that. <laughs> I mean, you got the ride on it. Yeah. yeah I, I told you that was probably going to be a fun deal, man. Good yeah. menu, helicopter ride. Got oh, yeah, game everything. Out of yeah, he got, he got, <laughs> got, he got to, the full got to see, college, <laughs> got college to see his, experience. Got I, to see his sons lose. I, I love that. That's good. You know, what I want to know that. is, we've, you know, I got the chance to sit in those seats one time. The basketball game, yeah, yeah. And, and it was in, it was on the schedule for like months, like like it, it was there, you know. So I want to know who got bumped from that. So somebody what had do you mean those, it was on the schedule for months, like because like, every time I've got it's been like literally I got a phone call like, hey, I, tomorrow night, well, you got I, the tickets, you want to go? Not with my with my time, it wasn't. It Let was, me ask okay. you, sitting that I've always said I've sat a row behind. Oh, yeah. I've never sat. Did you worry about your beverage the whole time? Yes. Did you worry about, like, if it was a bottle of water, having the top on, like, completely tight and way back behind you? No. What I worried about was— Or having it I, in your I, hand? I, I'm, I'm looking down to get my cheese just right on my chip, on yeah. my nachos, and then all of a sudden, player comes, and now I'm Defense. on Sports Center, and I gotta, <laughs> like, I take like, an elbow to the nose yeah. or something. Like, that's yeah. what I worried about the whole I, time. I'll tell you what, the funniest one was that lady got— I'm, I'm sorry, this sounds not, terrible. Not funny. Lady got, <laughs> not funny at all. The lady, the lady that was looking at her phone, and took a pass right to the face. That's yeah. my point. I don't want to be that person. Yeah. Like, that's the point. I sat I, like that in a baseball game one scary. time. Yeah. I was literally right next to the dugout, and you have to pay attention to every pitch. Mm-hmm. And this is before the screen, you know? And yeah. so you're sitting there and like, pitch, back to the pitcher, pop up. You know, you're like, you're watching the game. You, I usually go to baseball, I'm like really not kind of paying attention. Yeah. But when you sit that close to the field, oh, yeah. you have to watch every – it's swivel. exhausting. Hey, it hey, is exhausting. Every year, you know, I, one weekend a year I do this uh, college basketball tournament yeah. where I say I watch 14 games in like four days. And I'm, I'm at the scorer's table. And I have my computer, and I'm writing. And I, there's been many a times where the ball, you just feel it. Then your ball, you know, it, it's not so much the game; it's the pregame, it's the shoot around yeah. to start the we game. Because ten balls the ball on the field, flying yeah. around that stuff happens the all court. the time. So yeah, I mean, knock on wood. Well, especially you got some of these guys that are throwing at riders. Yeah, you know, you're standing down there doing a, an odd, and all of a sudden you feel the ball. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm gonna watch me hit this guy in the head. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but my point was somebody yeah. an article. Oh Here no, yeah, you sit there, you see the quarterbacks warming up. All of a sudden, the ball goes over the top of your head, and you turn around, and you're like, "Okay, you just tried to hit me with that the ball." That was meant for me. Yeah, <laughs> but somebody got bumped because this was Suns versus Mavericks. Somebody was going to this game, Shibo. and it was like, "Oh, you're yeah, out." Yeah, somebody. You're I, I, I watch a lot of Mavs games. I, yeah. Shibo goes to a lot. Of oh games yeah, <laughs> goes a lot of games. Grandkids, the grandkids, grandkids go to a lot of they games. Should be. Yep. Yep. All right. Before we end the show, I think we got a little enough time to quickly talk about this. Uh, Damone Clark played 49% of the snaps versus yeah. Indianapolis. Uh, Anthony Barr played 33%. Are we starting to see, and now he's back from injury, are we starting to see the transition to Damone Clark getting more opportunity than Anthony Barr? Or was this just a situation where you think they're easing Barr back in and within the next week or two, you expect that Barr will be getting the bulk of those carry, well, what, bulk of those. What snaps. I don't really know is, remember the game got out of hand there too. Mm-hmm. So was it more 50-50 and then Clark played more as you are? Maybe they're easing Barr back into from injury. Yeah. So yeah, Barr had a really good sack. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they brought him on the pressure, him and Wilson those times. I think what you're going to start to see is a split. I really, really do. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be like. Maybe certain down and distances you're thinking about putting Barr on the field because of the coverage. I think the one thing that Clark is lacking right now is the awareness, the awareness and coverage. 
okay, I'm I'm dropping, I'm too oh wait, I'm too wide, ball comes underneath. Okay, I should have had a better feel for turning and then taking the pitman running inside. You know, I didn't have that. I'm just dropping now I'm way too wide and the ball goes inside of me. Where maybe bars a little bit more of a He's kind of playing out of the corner of his eye. He sees it, he turns, he reacts, and then the ball's either defended or knocked down or tackled right there at the spot. Instead of being a 12-yard gain with maybe Clark, it's a 5-yard gain with with Barr in there. I, I, I do think you're going to see – I think this team is so willing to put guys in. that They're willing to do it on the offensive line. They're willing to do it at linebacker, willing to do it at safety. You know, corner's been kind of a position where they just kind of play with the guys, but we know they rotate the defensive line the way they did. So I, I think that you're going to see a contingency split with those guys. Yeah, I think so too. And we talked about it. We know that Clark is going to be your future and he's going to be here. I think he might get to a point, but I don't know because of the where we're at in the season where you'll be like, okay, now Clark gets this extensive amount versus Barr. So right now, as he's easing back in, I don't see one being distinctively better than the other. So I do agree with the split as of right now, until, on, I mean, unless it gets to a point where now you're seeing more of, for example, Clark, and you're like, okay, he needs to be out there a lot more. In that instance, you start switching it the percentage-wise. But as of right now, I agree with Brian, just more of a split. All right, that's a wrap. We appreciate you guys joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about the uh, Houston defense versus the Dallas offense. Still then for Nick Eatman. Brian Broaddus, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?